what? Why did past me hate them? Why did past me hate them? What was wrong with me? Put yourself in his situation. Wouldn't you do the same thing? Wouldn't you feel the same way? I, I literally would. Maybe I'm toxic. Hi. Today is April 12th, and the Shadow and Bone TV show comes out on April 23rd, and I have been mulling over the idea of rereading the entire Shadow and Bone Grisha trilogy before the TV show comes out, because I read the series a really long time ago, and quite honestly, I don't really remember a lot of things that happened, and I never finished the third book. But I want the context of the original trilogy, since we are getting in this TV show, a mix of the Grisha trilogy and the Six of Crows duology, and the timelines are going to overlap, even though they don't in the books. I feel like I haven't let myself be fully excited for this show, because I feel like I don't remember enough from the series, so I feel like I'm not as big of a fan of it, even though it is mixed with Six of crows. I feel like because I don't have that context and don't have enough of a memory of like what happened in that series that I haven't let myself be fully fully excited for this but like now that I'm gonna reread it and I'm gonna have all of this knowledge about it again I feel like I can let myself be fully excited and I'm getting very very excited for it. Hopefully I like it more this time because for me it's always been a very much like three star series. Not bad but not great. Very average to me and I never thought very much about it and I truly believe that that's because I read it right after Six of Crows. Six of Crows was like every everything to me and those characters are my everything. So when I read this they just like fell flat and I just didn't care very much since they weren't the Six of Crows characters so I think my brain was constantly comparing them to those characters but now I'm interested to see years later reading this independently of Six of Crows how I feel about Alina and Mal and the Darkling. Let's see if I like Mal anymore. Let's see if I like the Darkling a little bit more this time too. I am not a Darkling stan. I'm not even a Melina shipper or a Darklina shipper or whatever you call them. I don't ship Alina with anyone. I just want her to be happy. <laughs> but we'll see if any of that changes. We'll see how I feel. And I'm excited. I'm excited to do it. So let's get into reading this and see how it goes. So I am currently an hour and 55 minutes into the audiobook. I have seven hours and 26 minutes left, but I'm listening on double speed. So I really only have three hours and 43 minutes left. I'm definitely going to finish this book today easily. But some of my updates and my thoughts. I kind of love this. <laughs> I think I was right in that the Six of Crows duology, like reading that right before I read this uh, the first time around and just being so enamored with those characters who are like some of my all-time favorite characters and then switching over to this where like I didn't care about the characters in the same way really influenced how much I cared about these characters because this time around I really like Alina. I truly truly do and I like Mal as well. Still not really a Darkling stan. Um, he's only been in it for a little bit. I just got to the part where the Darkling cut someone's head off and then like saved Alina but yeah I mean he's like a murderer. I really don't think I'm gonna like him that much let's be honest. <laughs> At least not with Alina. I like his character. I think his character is really interesting but um, I, I'm definitely not gonna ship him with Alina. I don't think that's changed about me. <laughs> but I I might be a Molina shipper now. Where did this come from? I don't know. But for some reason they're they kind of make me like very happy and I really want them to be happy and be together because she really likes him. And I remember him being like annoying the first time I read it, but this time around, I mean he hasn't said that much, but this time around he really hasn't been that bad. So I'm like, maybe maybe I'm here for this. Maybe I'm here for them. But honestly, I'm really liking this a lot more than I remember liking it the first time around. And it has been years since I read it, but still, that's really good. I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm enjoying this more than I thought I would. <laughs> but all that's happened so far is that Alina is the Sun Summoner, or the Darkling is saying she's the Sun Summoner, and she's still like, I'm not Grisha, I'm not Grisha. But the Darkling is like, you don't even know what you are. So yeah, she's gonna find out she's the Sun Summoner soon. I remember that much about it, and I remember some of the stuff at the end, but... I don't remember a lot of the middle stuff, and I don't remember a lot of the plot, honestly. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna continue reading. I'll update soon once um, more exciting things happen, or if any of my opinions change. We'll see. <laughs> okay, I'm on like chapter 15 or something, like, but getting pretty close to the end at this point. How did I not love this the first time I read it? <laughs> This is why I love rereading books because you have such a different perspective once you've read something once and then when you read it again and you also have a different perspective when you read something at one point in your life and then you read it again at a different point in your life. Like I'm at such a different place in my life now than I was 
four years ago, like I don't even remember how long ago it was that I read Shadow and Bone, but it was a long time ago and I was a very different person back then. I had different taste in books, I had different values and priorities when it came to my life, but also when it came to like reading and stuff, like I looked for different things. I just finished reading the part where the Darkling kisses her and then the second time and then she's kind of just like confused and dazed and she doesn't know what to do because she like is mesmerized by him and she kind of likes him and at this point like we don't really know that he's manipulating her but like I know since I've read the book so I like remember that much but you don't really know what he's doing and people have warned her like be careful of the darkling be careful of the darkling we're all a little bit enchanted by him but like that's kind of his thing and I know he has an eye for you and she isn't like paying too much attention to it and she kind of falls for him a little bit and the first time I read it I didn't care about her in the Darkling like I mentioned and I didn't care about Alina and Mal either but I could easily see my young self falling for Alina and the Darkling like I know that if I'd read this in 2012 when I was like 14, 15, something like that I would have easily fallen for them because the like fictional men and real men that I prioritized in my life at that time were men like the Darkling. Toxic, manipulative, cunning men who will lie to you to get what they want and convince you that you're special and convince you that they need you and that they love you and that they want you because they're trying to use you for something and you can't see through it. I could see that the first time I read it as well, but I don't think I really realized like how intense that messaging was in this book. You can easily tell that Leigh Bardugo, and I'm pretty sure she's mentioned this before, modeled the Darkling after like real toxic men who were probably in her own life and in the lives of people she's known who did things like this to people, who manipulate people in this way, who convince you that you're the one and that you're special because they're trying to use you and they're trying to get something out of you. And it's so well written. That's why the Darkling's such a well written character and why he's so mesmerizing because everyone's enchanted by him because you're supposed to be enchanted by him because he's modeled after real people who really do this to you. And it's, oh my God, it's just so well written. But I just got to the part where her and Mal are reunited for the first time. And I remember the first time I read it, I was so mad at Mal for like being so mean to her when he first sees her and being like really petty. And he's like, I saw you with him. I saw the way that he looks at you. You're wearing like his symbol and like all of this stuff. And I hated that he reacted like that. But quite honestly, if I saw my best friend after months and months of not seeing her, thinking that she had never tried to reach out to me, falling for someone like the Darkling, being manipulated by the Darkling, thinking she was being tortured this entire time but then realizing she's just here flirting with the Darkling, I would also be mad. I would also probably be a little bit mean to her upon seeing her the first time because I'd be angry and hurt. And he's literally just like 17 and he's acting out because he's emotional because he thought that the person who's his best friend who he's in love with was being hurt this entire time and he did everything he could to try and get back to her only to find out that she's just flirting with the Darkling this entire time. And that's not me blaming Alina for anything. Like she was trying to reach out to him. It's miscommunication, but he doesn't know that. And he didn't know that and he was so hurt by it and I get it. I would probably react in a similar way. So like, I just don't blame him anymore. It's just making this book so much more complex than I remember it being. For some reason, the first time I read this, I felt like it was just really plain and I didn't feel much for the characters. I didn't feel like it had a lot of depth, but reading it now, there is so much depth to this story and it is so character driven. Like this entire story is just about Alina, just about her and her feelings and what she's going through and her experiences and the emotional manipulation she's experiencing and the confusion she's having about like her feelings. Who does she have feelings for? Is she in love with the Darkling or is he just playing her? And she loves her best friend who is now treating her this way which is also confusing to her and she hadn't seen him for so long and all of her emotions are just completely mixed up and muddled and like I get it <laughs> I feel what she's feeling I feel so much for her like honestly I was sitting there reading that last chapter and tearing up like genuinely tearing up over a book that used to just be like three stars for me super basic like didn't think about it but like now why is this like one of my all-time favorites <laughs>
I'm not kidding. Like I genuinely feel so much for Alina and Mal. And I can't believe how little I saw in this book before. Again, I feel like I'm like trashing it or something. I never disliked it. I always liked it. I just didn't care very much. But I see so much more in this book now than I used to see. And it's given it a whole new meaning. And I, I love it. I love it. I'm having such a good time rereading this. This was such a good decision. <laughs> now I'm really excited to get to Ruin and Rising because like technically I know how the story ends, but like I've never read it. So I don't actually know everything that happens. And I don't even know what happens with Alina and Mal. Like I don't know how that goes. And at this point I like genuinely ship them. I want them to be together and I want them to be happy. So I hope that happens. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to update on um, how I'm feeling about this. I just, I can't believe I'm loving this so much. Like so, so much more than I did the first time. I'm like tempted to give this five stars. I think I gave Six of Crows four stars the first time I read it. And I mean, upon reread, I would probably bump that up to a five because like I love it. But this is easily going to be four this time. It's not a three. It's like a 4.5. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? This is your sign to reread an old series that you thought was okay because maybe, maybe you'll love it this time around. Please help me. When did I become a Molina shipper? <laughs> Oh my god, okay, so I just finished chapter 19. I don't know how to explain how I went from like pretty much hating Mal. I thought he was so annoying, but like I was wrong. I was wrong. Everyone, including myself, used to be like, Mal is the worst. He's so like controlling and he wants Alina to only care about him and only pay attention to him. Like, no, he just doesn't want her to be manipulated by the Darkling, who is literally just a master manipulator and evil like also they're like banter and their angst and this like childhood like friends to lovers thing that we've got going on is so good and i i love my classic enemies to lovers okay that is like my favorite trope enemies to friends to lovers the superior trope but i'm here for this friends to lovers i'm i'm here for it it's better than her and the darkling i'm not apologizing i'm not apologizing for that i was so wrong i was so wrong about mal i'm literally sitting here reading this and like tearing up i just got to the scene where they're trying to find the stag and they've been like going around like looking for it and everything and running away trying to like stay hidden from the darkling and everyone who's trying to look for them and all of the banter they have right now the angst the two of them like making jokes with each other and laughing about old memories like oh i love them <laughs> like younger me was wrong she misjudged she really misjudged mal she really did but it's fine i can appreciate him now and I will continue to appreciate him. I really feel like I'm reading something different than I read the first time. I know I'm not, but it feels like I'm reading something else. That just goes to show you how much like when you read a book impacts how you feel about it. But yeah, uh, don't come for me. I'm a Melina stan now. Uh, if you love the Darkling and Melina, that's, that's your business. That's fine. That's your ship but uh, I will not be accepting any Mal hate here. We do not hate him in this house. We do not. We respect him. We respect Alina. Now I'm so excited for the show. Oh my God. <laughs> Who would have thought that me in 2020 would be sitting here crying over Alina and Mal? What, what parallel universe is this? Oh my God. Like, <laughs> Hold on. This lighting is so awful. How, where do I even put this? You you should see the way that I'm standing right now so that I can film at this angle. Oh my God. What did he just say? Hold on. He says, you belonged with me. Um, Siri, play you belong with me. Taylor Swift, Taylor's version. He says, did you miss me, Alina? Did you miss me when you were gone? And she says, every day. And he's like, well, I missed you every hour. Every hour. <laughs> I've risked my life for you. I've walked half the length of Ravka for you and I do it again and again and again. <laughs> what? Why did past me hate them? Why did past me hate them? What was wrong with me? So don't tell me we don't belong together. And then he kisses her. I, 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 I need to compose myself. <laughs> I truly cannot believe that in this year, 2021, when did I first read this book? I need to go back and look at my Goodreads. I feel like I was like 19 or something. I was really young. Yeah, okay, August 23rd, 2016. So it's literally been four, almost five years at this point since I first read it. Me four years ago, what was wrong with you? <laughs> what did Mal and Alina ever do to you to make you not like them together? 
they're perfect together. They're perfect. I'm... Okay, <laughs> I finished it. <laughs> Hold on, where is the book? Shadow and Bone is done. Why did I love this so much? <laughs> I don't know why I'm so shocked by this. Like I, I've said multiple times throughout this, I know why I didn't like it as much the first time. Obviously I was comparing it a lot to Six of Crows, having read it immediately after finishing that series and loving that series so much. But I loved it. Like I almost gave this five stars. Honestly, it's like a five in my heart, but like objectively more of a four because I know that I'm probably actually gonna like ruin and rising the most, but it it's so close to a five. Honestly, this is 4.5, like solid. This is literally gonna become one of my all time favorite series. I don't understand how this happened. I really went from being a mal anti to suddenly being like Melina's number one fan. Like. <laughs> One of those last scenes that they had together where they were in that prison cell together and she's spending that last night with him because he's supposed to be killed the next day because the Darkling is gonna kill him. Like, oh, it tore my heart to pieces. I love them. <laughs> Alina as well is just such a great main character. I really used to think she was just kind of boring, but now I love her. She's funny. I feel for her. I understand why she is the way she is and why she makes the choices she makes. And she's just this girl who knew nothing about any of this and didn't expect any of these things to even happen to her. Just thrown into this world and suddenly she has to like make do with what she's been given and try to take this power back from someone who's trying to use it for evil. I truly, truly like can't believe how much she has grown on me and how much I love her now. Anyway, let's move on to Siege and Storm now. I just downloaded the audiobooks. I'm gonna start it immediately and then I'll update again. But yeah, this was so good. Solidly four and a half stars. Hello. Hi. It's actually the next day and I started Siege and Storm, but I started it yesterday. I just didn't get to update. And basically what's happened so far is that Alina and Mel were just like hanging out, going from place to place, trying to hide. And the Darkling finds them. The Darkling takes them onto Nikolai's ship. We met Nikolai. I forgot how much I loved Nikolai. <laughs> and then Nikolai betrayed the Darkling and then they all escaped now. So now they're trying to see if they can trust Nikolai or not. But oh my God, I I forgot. I truly forgot how much I love Nikolai. He's literally one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character in this entire series, excluding Six of Crows, obviously, because the crows are all my favorites. But I love Nikolai. So I'm so, so excited that he's finally here. I feel like I'm just constantly repeating myself, but like, honestly, I can't believe how much I'm enjoying, how much more I'm enjoying this series this time around. But yeah, I'll update some more once I've read a bit more. Oh, also yesterday I read my old 2016 review of Shadow and Bone because I was updating my Goodreads and like adding in um, Shadow and Bone as a reread. And I saw that I had a review for it in 2016 when I first read the book. I was literally a Darkling stan. I literally wrote in my review. I love the characters, especially the Darkling, heart. Like, embarrassing. Embarrassing. I still like him as a character, but like, who was I? What? <laughs> anyway, we love growth. We love character development. Um, and now I'm a full-on Molina stan. I have no regrets. Don't at me. <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm sitting on my floor and there are a bunch of books everywhere. I'm reorganizing my bookshelves. Let's not mind that. But I've made more progress in Siege and Storm. It's actually been a couple days. I didn't read anything for a while. I didn't have time. But now I have about two hours of the audiobook left. Uh, so I'm nearing the end. A lot has happened. I don't know how much like detail I'm gonna go into with everything, but I'll probably do more of like a wrap up wrap up once I finish this one. Found out that Nikolai is Nikolai and a prince. And also Mal is definitely being much more annoying in this book than he was in the first one. But honestly, I really don't blame him as much in this one. Like everyone used to always be like, Mal is so toxic. And maybe he does more things in this one that I don't remember. But everyone is always like, Mal is so toxic. He's so toxic. And I know the like Darkling stands are gonna come for me and the anti-Mal stands are gonna come for me. But like, he's just a 17 year old boy or 16 year old boy or something. Like he's literally just a boy who loves his best friend and thought that they could get out of this situation and just wants what's best for her and for him and he's truly the only person who doesn't want her for her power and he just likes her for her and everyone's like he's so toxic yeah he's annoying he's not toxic toxic is the darkling i truly don't know how to express that to people he's a great character but he's the one who's toxic mal's just a teenager that's the difference <laughs> i'm not saying he's the greatest person in the world he's not 
but he's also not a terrible person like everyone wants to make him out to be. He really, really isn't. And people need to chill with who they call toxic. Because like if you're gonna call someone toxic, it deserves to be the Darkling and you cannot put the Darkling and Mal in the same category because they are so different. <laughs> At some point, we've all got to learn who the real toxic men are and that's the Darkling. <laughs> Currently what's going on is that Nikolai had like proposed this like engagement and stuff and um, Alina's obviously like no and Mal's like no never and he's being like a little bit annoyed but like again I get it if I was in love with this girl and some random prince came along and I finally just got to be with her for the first time and she's constantly getting kidnapped by some like evil villain and I thought we were finally gonna be able to be together and then this prince comes along and is like hmm why don't you marry me I'd also be possessive of her and be mad and annoyed that this has to happen because we can't be together like I just don't know why everyone blames him so much put yourself in his situation wouldn't you do the same thing wouldn't you feel the same way I, I literally would maybe I'm toxic but who knows. Anyway, that's my Mal rant. I feel like this entire video is just gonna be me defending Mal. That's not what I intended to do, but like some of y'all really, really do not know what the definition of the word toxic is. I, anyway. <laughs> Listen, why does everyone hate Mal? <laughs> he didn't do anything, okay, okay, oh my God. He literally just loves this girl. He kissed her, she flinched, not knowing she can see the Darkling, like she's having visions of the Darkling. And so he thinks that she's like repulsed by him. Of course you'd be hurt. Of course you'd be a little bit petty. Of course you'd be like, I understand what that means. Fine, I'm done. And then walk away. Explain to me why we're blaming him for doing nothing, for reacting in a normal way when someone flinches at you kissing them because you think that it's because they hate you or they don't love you anymore. Like, dude, I would react the same. I'm... I cannot believe people hate him as much as they do. I really can't believe people hate him as much as they do. He has not done anything even remotely close to as bad as anything that the Darkling has done or even other main characters, like main love interests. Like he's not a bad person. So why does everyone act like he's the villain of this story? I fundamentally do not comprehend this. Like I just don't comprehend this. He's reacting so normally, so normally, not even for a teenager, for anyone. He's reacting so normally. So why is everyone like, oh, Mal's the worst, he's toxic, he's like manipulative, blah, blah, blah. He's literally not. He just likes her, he wants the best for her and he wants them to be happy together. And he doesn't know everything that's going on with her. So he can only react to what he knows about. And if he knew about the Darkling thing, I don't think he would react this way. <sighs> anyway, this is a um, no hate space for Mal. Anyone who comes here pretending that Mal is like toxic or saying that he's like bad for this reason or that reason, I will have none of it, none of it, none of it. He's not done anything wrong. <laughs> Hello, okay. I'm aware that I look vaguely like an 18th century woman who sits in her house and does like cross stitching and reads all day. It's kind of what I am anyway. Not the point. <laughs> I finished Siege and Storm and I have thoughts, so let's talk about it. I will die on this hill that Mal is not toxic. People just do not understand that he's a teenager and they do not understand that the only reason he is acting the way that he is is because he's heartbroken and because he just wants what's best for her and doesn't want this power to corrupt her. That's all that he's saying, that's all that he's doing, and he's a 17 year old boy who's heartbroken. He's not reacting in a bad way. Everyone needs to calm the fuck down. I swear to God, I am not reading the same book as the people who are calling Mal toxic. He's not toxic. Y'all just need to reread the book. <laughs> anyway, that being said, I loved this one too. I gave it four out of five stars too. I think I probably like this one actually a little bit less than the first one. I really loved the first one. For some reason, it made me very emotional. This time around, maybe it was because I took a bit of a break in between reading it too, but I feel like I was maybe a little bit less emotionally invested in the characters compared to with the first book, but I still obviously really, really loved it. And I'm just so excited to start Ruin and Rising now. I'm gonna start it tonight and um, make some progress because I, I'm so excited because I haven't read it before. So this is the only one that I'm gonna be actually fully surprised about. Truly though, like I know I've just been like talking about how Mal isn't toxic like for a while in this video but I genuinely love the characters like I really really love the characters and I don't know what it was the first time that I read this that made me think that like I don't like the characters as much as I like the Six of Crows characters and I technically don't because the crows will always be my favorites they're like some of my top favorite characters of all time but Alina and Mal and like Zoya and Nikolai and like everyone in this book as well I love them I love them so much and they're becoming some of my favorite characters too and 
I just, I can't believe I didn't feel that way the first time I read it. Anyway, I'm just having such a good time with it. I loved the twists and turns of this one. I loved the angst. I'm very curious to see what happens with the Darkling in the next book because I know that everyone says that the Darkling gets way worse by the third book. So yeah, he really wasn't in the second book very much. He's really mostly just in the first one. So yeah, very, very excited. Let's start Ruin and Rising and see how I feel. Oh my god. Okay, please don't mind the fact that I look like this. I haven't even looked in the mirror today. I know I look crusty, but oh my god, I'm reading Ruin and Rising. I'm very close to the end and I just got to the part where the Darkling, he killed all of the teachers at the orphanage and he makes Alina stand there and stare at Anna Kuya's body and says something like, I believe she was the closest thing you had to a mother. As he makes her stand there and look at her dead body, are you kidding me? You want me to like him? Never, 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 literally never. There's nothing that could ever make me like him. He's evil. He's so terrible. He's so manipulative. I, I hate this. It's so good. It's so well written, but I hate it. I hate it so much. He's so awful. He is so awful. And then he's using the children as bargaining chips to make her do what he wants. He literally says that he's going to kill them one by one if she doesn't show up in where he wants her to show up in like five days with Mal. And that would mean Mal has to sacrifice his life because we found out that Mal is also the second amplifier. And like, that was a great twist too. But like, oh my god. And then he literally says to her, I will strip away all that you know, all that you love, until you have no shelter but me. First of all, a great line. Second of all, oh my god. I don't have words for how terrible he is. First of all, he's like basically Anakin Skywalker. Let's be honest, the parallels are so real. Second, that is so purely cruel and evil and I don't have another word for it. It's just evil. Like, I can't think of a worse way to emotionally control or manipulate someone than to say something like, I will take away everything that you have until you have no shelter but me. He is so toxic. He is so terrible. And you want me to like him? You want me to forgive this man? It'll never happen. Oh my god. I'm never gonna ship him with her. I'm never gonna like him at all. I want him dead. That's what I want. Such a good villain. Don't get me wrong. Such a good villain. Honestly, one of the best villains I have read about ever and also in just like a long time, but also ever. But oh my god. Oh my god, this is so terrible. It's so terrible. It's really hurting me. <laughs> it's terrible, but it's great. Like, it's great. It's great storytelling. I'm having a wonderful time. Um, I mean, not really, but it's still a great book. <laughs> anyway, just had to update on that, and now I'm gonna go back to reading. I'm almost done. I have like an hour of this audiobook left. I just don't want it to end, but the show comes out tonight slash tomorrow. Technically, I don't know when it drops. Today's the 22nd. It comes out on the 23rd, so I'm really pushing this till like the very end, very last minute. But I'm almost done. I'm definitely gonna finish it before the show will drop, so um, yeah, I'm so excited. I'll come back and update with all of my thoughts and do like a whole wrap-up of my thoughts on the entire series and everything um once I finish this so in about an hour or so so I will see you then okay I switched to the physical book because I need to read this faster <laughs> but Mal and Alina are literally friends to star-crossed lovers that is what they are and it's so good it's so good why did I not like this the first time around and why didn't anybody tell me that this is what we were gonna get in the third book because I am living for it. Like they're literally talking about the way their lives could have been different if they met under different circumstances and all of this stuff and they're like but this would still be our end because it would be. <laughs> I'm so sad. He was right even in dreams we had no future. If we somehow both survived tomorrow I would have to seek an alliance to a crown. Mal would have to find a way to keep his heritage a secret. They are friends to star-crossed lovers. This is one of my new favorite tropes. I love this. <laughs> he drew back, searching my eyes. I wanted more for you. A white veil in your hair, vows we could keep. I love them. <laughs> I love you, Alina. Stop it. Don't stop. I want you to be together forever, to be happy forever, but like, you're both gonna like, die by the end of this. <laughs> finally dead. He's finally dead. He's finally dead. Oh, what a satisfying death. Can we bring Mal back to life now though, please? He's alive. Oh my god. Okay. I have to keep going. <laughs> I just got to the afterward. This is such a good book. Thank <laughs> you.
understanding. <laughs> Mal and Alina deserve each other. I will die on this hill. <laughs> oh my god, okay. This whole time, from rereading the first book, to rereading the second book, to reading this for the first time, and the whole time I read Six of Crows, and the time when I first read the series, I legitimately thought that Alina was dead. This entire time I have been under the assumption that she is actually dead. And this might just be me being completely stupid because I don't remember something from Six of Crows and they might have mentioned it or I didn't catch it because like I didn't know enough about this series and I hadn't read this series first. But I thought she was actually dead because that's what we're made to believe because obviously she fakes her death. I thought she was actually dead so this whole time while I was rereading these books I was assuming that she actually dies at the end of this book and she doesn't die! <laughs> She doesn't die, her and Mal are alive, and they're married, and they're happy, and oh my god, that was the perfect ending. <laughs> they're literally happy. I, I can't believe this. I really spent this entire time under the assumption that she's literally just gonna die at the end, so I'm gonna be devastated. Every time I was like, well, I know how it ends, it was me thinking that she was actually dead. <laughs> I can't believe that I spent this whole time thinking she was actually gonna die only to have her not die and be happy. <laughs> this is the plot twist I needed. But oh my god, I love this. I love this so much. This was so good. What a good ending. What a satisfying ending to such a good series. <laughs> It's currently 6 15 p.m for me right now and the show comes out at midnight tonight so i have like what six hours before um i can watch the first episode of shadow and bone and i'm so glad to have read the whole series now by the time you watch this the show will already be out so you've seen it this current me hasn't seen it but um just know that as you're watching this i've already watched the show and i'm making a whole video on it because i have to at this point <laughs> I hope that it's good. I hope that I love it. I hope that it lives up to this series because my god, I can't believe how much I love these now. <laughs> Honestly, an all-time favorite series for me now. I love Alina. I love Mal. I love Nikolai. I love Zoya. I love David. I love Jenya. I love all of them. I love all the characters except the Darkling. Fuck him. He's evil. <laughs> but I do love him as a villain. Don't get me wrong. Such a good villain. An incredible villain. But everyone else is just like so precious to me and I want to protect them and I want them all to be happy and oh my god, I can't believe we got a good ending. <laughs> I know I talked about it a lot throughout this video, but obviously this is like a very character-driven story. I mentioned earlier that I feel like this story, especially Shadow and Bone, was so much about Alina and her feelings and everything she was going through emotionally, as well as physically, obviously, having been thrown into this whole situation, finding out she's the Sun Summoner, realizing she has all this power, and realizing there's so many people who want to use her power now that they're aware of it, and everything that comes with that, and the danger that that puts her in, both physically and emotionally, her complicated emotions for the Darkling, this man who has been trying to manipulate her but she also has some sympathy for him because she kind of understands the loneliness that he is feeling and she also recognizes that he is human and someone who was taken advantage of. It wasn't like he was born evil, he was made to be evil. And then her complicated feelings about Mal as well because she loves him and she loved him from beginning to end. That never changed. But there were so many obstacles in their way preventing them from being together for valid reasons and because they were also just not communicating well. We had some miscommunication for sure, but there were also some legitimate reasons for why they couldn't be together fully and emotionally be vulnerable with one another because it would lead to too much pain and too much heartache. And I just love it. I love everything about how emotional this story is, how much this story is just purely about emotion. The fact that Alina becomes like this saint that is upheld as this saint that everyone reveres and loves and praises and prays to quite literally, who is then seen as like a martyr who sacrificed herself for the greater good to save the world when she's still alive and now getting to live this like very normal life is such a beautiful arc. I love that for a main character because she starts out as a nobody becomes a hero for a little bit and then disappears into oblivion and becomes nobody again. And that's okay. Like, she didn't have to die a hero. Technically she does since she fakes her death, but she gets to live on being the person she wants to be, getting to be with the person she wants to be with, and living the life that she always wanted. With nobody trying to control her, nobody trying to take her power without her life constantly being threatened. And she gets to be happy just being herself. 
Of course she's devastated that this power has been taken away from her because her power meant a lot to her, but it also wasn't who she is, you know? I loved that her power didn't define her, and that's part of the reason I love her relationship with Mal. It's because Mal is one of the only people who understood that about her. That was why he acted the way that he did so often, why he was so afraid of her power, why there were times he wished her power away, because he knew that it didn't define her, because he knew that people would try to take advantage of her for it, and they did, and because he was worried that it would corrupt her in some way. Not because she wasn't strong enough to handle it, but because of the world that they live in. And it's so realistic. Like, I know that it's obviously like fantasy, which is just metaphor for real life, like situations and realities that we experience and live through. But I think it's just so beautifully done. I like that the story is in so many ways really, really subtle. I feel like Alina's arc is really subtle. And I think that's why a lot of people aren't as attached to this series as they are to Six of Crows. And don't get me wrong, if I were to rank them, Six of Crows is still like my god tier all time favorite series. And this is definitely below that for me. It's still high up there. I really loved this, but it's not like at the same level for me, but it's gone way up from where it used to be because I think now I can recognize what this series is trying to do, which is very different than what Six of Crows is trying to do. And it has its own merit and that's what I like about it. It's very different from a lot of other YA fantasy and I don't think I recognized that the first time around because I felt like it was just too similar to everything else. We have another main character who has to choose between the best friend and the bad guy. Like I was just seeing this like basic love love triangle that had like the same three people in it pretty much, but I wasn't paying as much attention to the underlying themes of the story and the development that the characters go through throughout the story and their growth, which is so significant because this is a character-driven story. The plot and the development of this story, the action that we get, is mostly just internal character development. It's all internal, it's all within the characters and their arcs and their relationships with each other, which as you know is like my favorite type of thing, so I don't get why I didn't like this more the first time around. <laughs> it's fine. I also grew as a person. I've also changed a lot since 2016 when I first read these and I'm so grateful and glad that I have because now I can appreciate the series for what it truly is. But yeah, I love it. I love the Grisha trilogy. Like I've said so many times now throughout this video, one of my all-time favorites now. And I will say this till the day that I die, I will die on this hill. Mal and Alina deserve each other. They're perfect for each other. Mal is not toxic. Mal is a great love interest. He is one of my favorite love interests in any YA book that I've read ever, honestly, at this point. I love his character. At this point, at the end of this book, I used to say Nikolai was my favorite character in the entire like Grisha series, not counting Six of Crows. Mal and Alina are my favorite characters. Alina's my absolute favorite character, Mal is my second favorite character, then it's Nikolai. Fight me, I don't care. Mal is a great character. The amount of development that he goes through alone is incredible. The way that he's able to look within himself and see his own faults and actually change them is wonderful. Like, name other characters who are able to do that. Not many. And I love someone who is able to do that. He's such a good person. But I think that pretty much sums up the majority of my thoughts on the Grisha trilogy and my reread. This was so much fun to do. I am so glad that I reread these books and that I have this newfound love for them. I'm super excited to see how the show goes. I'm really excited to see what I think. I hope that it lives up to the series because this series deserves a good adaptation. So I'm really hoping that they do it justice. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts on the Shadow and Bone trilogy and if you've watched the show already please don't spoil anything for the show in the comments here. I will be making another video about the show so if you do want to talk about spoilers just be sure to like tag your spoilers or something. I'm fine to discuss them but like just don't flat out spoil anything for anyone. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media all of my links are in the description box as always but thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.